All right, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Joe Piverunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm that covers disruptive technology for a broad audience of institutional and retail investors across the globe. Today's presentation is called 10 Hydrogen Fuel Cell Stocks to Watch. Now, there's a number of reasons why you may want to watch fuel cell stocks. You could hold some, you could be thinking about holding some, or you could watch them in much the same way that you enjoy watching train wrecks. And that's kind of the camp that we fall into. So we've covered fuel cell stocks and the whole hydrogen economy thesis now for quite a while. I think at least seven, eight years we've been looking at this thesis. And what we've noticed over time is a lot of a lot of hype, a lot of stock price manipulation. And I think that the manipulation and, and hype is largely a result of the thesis being very compelling and easy to understand. So yesterday we talked about, was it a few days ago, Sino transplantation, regenerative medicine, growing organs and printing organs, stuff like that, designing a, a new motor or the appeal of graphene. These are all things that sound very exciting, but when it comes down to brass tacks, they never seem to go anywhere. One of our readers best summed that up in the last piece we wrote by saying, not the hydrogen economy again. So people are kind of worn out of hearing about how it has so much potential, but not seeing it be realized. But we have to be careful not to be jaded. And we always have to keep an open mind. So today we want to talk about hydrogen fuel cell stocks. And first, a briefer on what these are about. Um, hydrogen fuel cells will use hydrogen and oxygen to generate uh, clean electricity and the only byproduct is water. The technology has been around for a long time since 1838. There's many variations in use today. And now we can break down the use cases into three types, portable, stationary, and transportation, each with its own total addressable market and whatnot. So as I said before, we've been looking at this for quite a while and Back in the day, there used to be a fuel cell index that tracked companies that were involved in fuel cells, and that index has since uh, deceased. But it used to contain 19 companies, and then um, of those, six went bankrupt, weren't trading, or suspended. So almost a third of the constituents blew up, and then the ETF that was attached to that index went away. And since then, there's been a need to come up with a list of stocks since there isn't an index on our own. So the last time that we looked at our list of fuel stocks, this was a list we put together back in 2014. And then we looked at it several years ago to see how it had changed. And there were a number of things that happened here. So first of all, Hydro Hydrogenics was acquired by Cummins. So that's great. It's a bit of a, a success story coming out of fuel cell stocks. Hypersolar was over-the-counter junk. I'm sure it still is. And then Ceramic Fuel Cells, that company also, I believe, went into administration. So there isn't really, and you can tell just by looking at the size of those two companies, they weren't going anywhere fast. So three of our companies are off the list. So we're left with three, four, five, six, seven. And to that, we added Bloom Energy. So Bloom is a newcomer. We'd been watching Bloom for quite a while. They would be, they are a fuel cell stock. So we added them to our list. And then we kind of took a look at what these companies were getting up to. And that was the last time that we updated everybody on this thesis. I believe that was in May of 2020. Now, what happened since then is that fuel cell stocks went back to their usual routine of, of being hyped and then receding. So here is a interesting diagram. You'll see that there are four stock price charts, each with a red X. That red X denotes early January, precisely the time that all these fuel cell stocks peaked. So I haven't put the names because that distracts from the message. But at the bottom right hand, that's a UK stock. So you could see it behaved a little bit differently. But the other three, these are large fuel, the largest fuel cell stocks right now. The prices may give you an indication of which ones they are. But the point here is that they're all moving together. The reason these all jumped, from what I can tell, based on looking at using Google search, and then you can filter based on time frame, it appears that a large investment of $1.6 billion by a Korean firm into plug power is what 
caused all the, the stocks to rise. So a rising tide lifts all boats. And that was probably the case if you charted all fuel cell stocks, that was probably the case across the board. Now that's not a good thing because the only stock that really deserved to be to, to, to have a, a premium based on new information would have been plug power. Why all these other stocks moved in a similar fashion is, a, is of a concern because the information didn't really affect them specifically. You could argue that it was good news for the overall sector, but they shouldn't have enjoyed the same sort of price appreciation that plug power did. Now, as a result of that, and it, it, perhaps let's say related to that, a number of companies in 2021 put out fuel cell ETFs. Now, our last piece in May of 2020, we had said one problem that faces investors who want exposure to this sector, if you can call it a sector, is that there's no ETFs. Well, that's changed. In 2021, three ETFs were launched, surprisingly, and these are the names. So <clears throat> at the top here is Global X. Now, we've always found Global X ETFs to be superior to their competitors, generally speaking. And then there's Direction. They have an ETF. And then this third one, Defiance, it's interesting for a couple reasons. First of all, they have quite a bit of assets under management compared to the other two, $53 million. And they have a very low expense ratio. 30 basis points on a thematic ETF is very low. So we don't know why they're able to, to, to have that so low. It could be a function of what uh, paying a low cost to their index provider, it's hard to say. But these are the three ETFs that were put out and you can see the respective indices they track. And maybe the biggest takeaway here is that nothing's really happening. So if you're an ETF provider, you want to be measuring assets under management in billions. That's mean, that, you know, like ARC does, that's a successful ETF provider. If you're 20 to $50 million, it seems unlikely that you'll survive. If you're under $100 million for too long, it just doesn't show there's a lot of interest in the theme. So these ETFs were you know, debuted last year. Maybe they haven't had enough time to attract assets, but generally speaking, when you have a group of ETFs targeting the same theme, one will start emerging as a leader. So that appears to be defiance, but that still isn't very a very meaningful amount of assets under management. So we would argue that unless these numbers go up, perhaps institutional investors just aren't that interested in the hydrogen economy. Now, what's interesting to do here is to look at the constituents of these three ETFs. And what we've done here is we've taken the top 10 companies from each. You can see them here. And in this table, we've colored um, Stocks that fall into all three are in green, and there's three of those. So you can see plug power is found in all three. It's actually in position one, two, and three of the of the ETFs there. Then you've got Ballard, that's in all three, and then Dusan Fuel Cell is in all three. Then when it comes to the yellows, <clears throat> these are companies that are found in at least, let's say, in two. So two providers have included these companies. And what what this tells us are what ETF providers, when we say ETF providers, we mean, of course, the, the index providers. What These index providers were able to agree that these are the companies that ought to be included in a fuel cell index. In a lot of scenarios or themes, index providers can't seem to agree on what stocks should be included, sometimes dramatic disagreement. And that's not a good thing because it tells you that nobody's really certain about what stocks ought to be called you know, or classified into a particular theme. In this case, everybody seems pretty certain that these names that you see here all ought to be considered fuel cell stocks. So if we look at the weightings, so if we take those, and let's go back here because it's worth noting, you have, just to count these, you have the three that are included in all, in all three ETFs and one's included in, in two ETFs there are seven of those. So we have here 10 total names. So if we look at the top three, the weightings in each of these ETFs, and then we look at the next seven, these are the weightings. You see that Global X has about 60% of their portfolio is in those stocks that everybody could agree upon. Now, there's one other thing that 
that's worth looking at here. And that's the direction ETF is kind of different from the other two. And that's because it includes quite a few large chemical companies. So we looked at, we wrote a, a piece, a accompanying piece on this and looked at these names. And these are some of the largest chemical companies in the world. Lind, I believe, is the largest industrial gases company in the world. Another company, Air Products and Chemicals, we're very familiar with that company. We've been invested in them for a decade now. They're part of our dividend growth strategy. They're, it's a great company from that perspective. So these are large chemical companies. And you can also see the two here, Enias and Idemitsu Kosan. These are Japanese petroleum refiners. So why are these ending up in a fuel cell ETF? Well, what happens sometimes is when you create an index and you're trying to appeal to institutional investors, sometimes you want to include some constituents that help sort of stabilize your portfolio. And that's clearly what's happening here. So we don't find that attractive because we don't want our portfolios padded with extraneous stuff to kind of smooth risk. If we're going to take a bet on something, we want to take a pure play bet. So we would argue that the direction ETF is way off here and that if you remove the large chemical companies, you're not, very, you're not getting very much exposure to what you want to be getting exposure to. And we can take a look at that by simply removing those chemical companies from the the aforementioned list and you see that you know global x doesn't have any so they're they're still maintaining that 60 percent weighting for the 10 fuel cell stocks we talked about direction has dropped significantly and then defiance has dropped as well defiance included two of those so large chemical companies we wouldn't consider those being valid that you can argue that they're incidental ways to get exposure to the hydrogen economy, but only if it really, really takes off. And what we're interested in are ways to get exposure that are more pure play. So if we go look at the Global X ETF, so out of the three ETFs that we've looked at, the Global X is the most appealing in terms of the sort of pure play exposure you're getting. Five of those names, so half the names, aren't familiar to us based on the list that we showed you we established in 2014. Now, our most recent update, just right before the call, I noted that a reader had sent us two names, Nell ASA and Power Cell Sweden, and had mentioned these were Nordic firms that we may want to take a look at for the fuel cell thesis. So we had mentioned that in the piece, so, so we had mentioned those, but had not really covered them. So if we look at these five new names, we can see, we can make a couple observations. First of all, they're, they're all over the board. There's no domestic bias here. These are what France, Norway, Sweden, Korea, United Kingdom. So that's great. We love international companies because they, they give us a diversification effect. Now, the one thing we don't like here is that market cap is quite low. So with the exception of Nell ASA and Dusan, the market caps are all below a billion dollars and we don't invest in companies that have a market cap below a billion dollars. So these are names that uh, may be interesting to look at, but here's the thing. If we're gonna invest, and I'm not saying that we would because I'm, we're not entirely sure this thesis even has legs, but if we were to invest in the hydrogen economy, we wouldn't do that by buying an ETF. Retail investors would probably be best served to do that. But in our own portfolio, we've decided we're not going to hold ETFs because that doesn't do our subscribers any service by taking the easy way out and choosing an ETF. If we're going to make a bet, we're going to try to find the leader in any particular theme and make a bet there. So if we were going to make a bet on, on fuel cells or let's say the hydrogen economy, we'd want to find the leader and invest in that company. And to find the leader, we, we look at a number of things. First of all, revenues, and then also size. And here we've sorted the 10 fuel cell stocks in the Global X ETF by market cap. And you can see the clear leader by size, plug power. And we've also included the last quarter revenues for all these firms. And one of them, as you can see, doesn't have any revenues, or so they're so small that it's not even worth mentioning. That's AFC Energy. 
but the others do have revenues. And you can see we've calculated our valuation ratio. Now that's simply taking the market cap and then dividing that by last quarter revenues times four. That's taking the last quarter and annualizing it. That gives us a valuation ratio. Well, we have an internal rule that says we don't invest ever in stocks with a simple valuation ratio over 40. And then, you know, you can pull up a list of stocks and see how they relatively compare. So just based on experience, plug power at a valuation ratio of 20, you, you couldn't, you wouldn't argue that was overvalued, right? It's just right about in the middle. But what's more interesting to look at here, and it's quite remarkable, is the one year return. So if you recall that slide we looked at before where everything had peaked, that was about a year ago, right? So that was in January 2021. Here we are in January 2022. So it's very easy to pull that one year return. Look at that. If you, you know, followed the, the rats when the flute was playing and, and bought into these stocks at peak, this is where you would be sitting. So fuel cell stocks, that's not attractive to us. That doesn't help. Volatility doesn't help you sleep well at night. So these, the, the volatility you're observing here across all these stocks is not a good thing. Now, the next step that we're probably going to take, and, and one of the reasons why we did this presentation is because we've had a lot of readers and subscribers interested in the fuel cell thesis, the hydrogen economy. So we're going to do an update, and we've done that, and now the next thing would be, all right, what does plug power look like? There's a lot of interest in that stock. And people have been asking about it and they seem to be generating revenues now. There's some interesting stuff going on there. We actually have someone on the research team looking at it right now. And the first thing we're trying to figure out is how can a company have negative revenue? Well, that is a story in itself. So the next piece we'll probably do on this will be on plug power. Now, just want to leave you with one other thing, kind of the the elephant in the room is is Nikola Motors. So this was a company that had come out and said they were going to build semi trucks that were using hydrogen fuel cells, and the it was a SPAC, and the share price soared from ten dollars a share, which is what all SPACs price at, to over sixty five dollars a share. Well, today that's trading at about seven dollars and forty five cents. So from peak to trough, that's an eighty nine percent loss. And the reason for that is the founder, not the company, they wanted to, to make that very clear. The founder was charged with three counts of fraud for essentially lying about nearly everything relating to the business. Now, why this company still has a $3 billion market cap and there are actually investors still interested in it is mind blowing in much the same way that Momentous Space, the space transport company whose founder was also indicted by the feds that still continues to trade why these stocks even trade after something like that it's just mind-blowing but be that as it may you know fuel cells the the whole fuel scale cell landscape you need to be very careful about where you're placing your bets you certainly don't want to dabble in anything over the counter or any sort of specs without revenues or anything like that and you want to stick with the companies that are legitimized by ETF providers and index providers who vet these companies and make sure that you're not investing in some bullshit. So um, we'll leave you with that, these 10 fuel cell stocks. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be putting out more videos. This is a green tech themed video and we'll be looking at, as I said, we'll do the plug power piece and kind of see where that sits and, and, and find out if that uh, company is compelling. So thank you very much for your time, much appreciated. Questions, drop them in the comments section. Love to hear feedback. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.